Hey yo, what's up guys and welcome to my new video. Today I want to show you a little unboxing plus review from this new Chinese thing client computer. This is a small high quality mini PC which can run either Windows or Linux and can be used as a home server, surfing station or desktop PC. And this is the new model from 2013 and if you want more details on this device just check out the link which is in the description, there you can find the link to the seller. And now enough of talking and let's get started with the unboxing. Okay, so first let's take a look at the front of the package. On the front of the package we can see that it should have a dual core, support DirectX 10, support full HD and 3D games. It should also have a serial port, 6 USB 2.0 connectors and it should support gigabit Ethernet and 720p movie playback. We will later see if those specs are true, so let's take a closer look at the backside. On the back side we can see some more facts and here it says that it's really cheap, reliable, that it only should consume 25 watts and save up to 80% energy costs and that it is a system on a chip design and it supports many resolutions. You can run Windows XP, Windows 7, Linux, you have USB, serial port and LAN boot all integrated into this device. So on this part of the package you should see how it looks like. I think I've got the right one because the left model has HDMI, two Wi-Fi antennas and this is a little bit more expensive and I just purchased the cheapest one. And now let's get started and open up the box. Okay guys, then let's open it up. So here we go. So I'm a little bit excited which color I got because I just purchased it and didn't tell um, the seller any color. Okay, let's open it up. And here we can see the mini PC, a stand and the uh, power supply. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the stand here. So as you can see, this is made out of solid plastic. It comes in completely black and you can use this to align your uh, mini PC. Let's put this beside and check out the other stuff which is in the box. Further, we got a um, power cable as you can see here. So um, this is a 2-pin power connector which you also know from the PS2 or any other devices which you got at home. And um, you just have to plug this into the um, power supply and the other end here in your power socket. This is a European connector, so if you are from USA this is how the connectors in U Europe look like. And now let's take a closer look at um, the um, power supply. So here we got the power supply. So here we have the back of the power supply and here we can see that the maximum output is 3 amps at 12 volts which equals 36 watts and that means that the maximum power consumption of this mini PC must be below 36 watts which is a really good value for a full PC. We can also see that this power supply has a CE sign and on the front we can see that there is a little LED which indicates if the power supply is running or not. Then here on this side we have the 2 pin connector for the power supply cable. So let's try if it fits in. Okay, it fits but it's a little bit twisted so maybe let's try this from the other side. Okay, so here we go. And as you can see it fits perfectly in. And then you just have to connect the other end to your power socket. Okay, then here we have the DC connector which just fits in into your mini PC to power it on. Okay, now let's put this beside and take a closer look at the other stuff which is in the box. Here we go. And I can see another cable in there. Let's check it out. And this is just another power supply cable. I don't know why there are two in the box, but it's just good to have. <laughs> so let's keep it. Okay, so now let's take out the mini PC. I think that was everything which was in the box except the PC. So let's take it out and let's take a closer look at it. So as you can see the full case is made out of metal so now we'll take a closer look at the top. The top just looks like it, it's golden, it, is, it looks really awesome and if you tap at it it's really shiny and bright and this, this really looks awesome. So as you can see the front, the back and the bottom are silver and the top is golden and the material used is also really thick so I think it's 3 or 4 millimeter metal also it has many ventilation holes to keep the system cool because this is a fanless designed PC and you have many ventilation holes to keep it cool and you won't hear any noise from this PC because it's fanless. Then let's take a close look at the front. On the front we can see a USB port, a microphone jack and a headphone jack to connect the headset to the front. Then we have another USB port and um, to the right we can see the power button. So let's take a closer look at the other side. 
let's turn it around. And on this side you can see one more sticker that says that there is Intel inside. Also you can see some more ventilation holes to keep the system cool. You just need more ventilation holes because this is a fanless design and to keep the system cool you have to have many ventilation holes. But I think they just look cool. Okay, so here on the back side we can see the DC 12 volts check and let's try if the connector fits in. So here we go. And as you can see it fits in perfectly, you just have to press a little and now let's get it out again. Then right next to the DC check we got a um, keyboard connector, so you can connect a keyboard. Here we have a display connector, then right to the display connector we got a Ethernet port for internet connection. Then we got four USB 2.0 ports and then we got another um, headphone check and another microphone check. And as you can see um, for Wi-Fi I don't have anything in here because I purchased the model without Wi-Fi just to save money and I will just use the Ethernet port. And here on this side we got some more ventilation holes which really keep the system cool. And now let's take a closer look at the last side which is the bottom side. And as you can see the bottom side has the same color as the front and the back side. And if you want to open up the system you just have to open up 8 screws. So 4 on the right and 4 on the left. And then you should be able to upgrade things like system memory, the SSD or Wi-Fi or something. But you can't upgrade the CPU or the GPU because those are components which are soldered to the mainboard. And now let's take a closer look at the stand which was also in the box. And here we have the stand and if you take a closer look at the stand from the front you can see that there are two different shapes. The right shape is rectangular and the left shape is round. And you can only use the stand in one direction. So let's try this. Here we have the device and let's stick it in. And as you can see it only fits in in one direction or the other direction. And I think it looks really cool with the stand. But you can also use it without the stand which should make no difference in ventilation and usage. Okay guys so that was my unboxing of this device here. Now I'll go and get some monitor, a keyboard and a mouse and then we will start up the whole system and do some benchmarks and tests on this device here. Okay guys as you can see I have now built up the test system. And now we will start up the um, computer and see how well it performs. As you can see I have now attached it to a mouse, a keyboard and to a monitor. And now let's go and power it up. So here we go. So as you may have seen the power button for this device is here on the front. And if you want to press it and it is in the stand you have to hold it because it will glide back because the stand is not that good. And now it should power up. So as you can see here we have the American Megatrans BIOS. And let's open it up. And let's check out the standard BIOS features. Here we can see that this device has two SATA and IDE ports. And on the top we can see that there is one device in the SATA port 2. And also on the bottom we can see that it has 1 GB of system memory. Okay, so if we check out the primary hard disk we can see that a SSD is built in into this device which should have 8 GB. But as you can see here it says 0 MB, I think it somehow messed up with the partition. So let's just go back. So we're now in the advanced CPU settings and here we can see the CPU which is built in into this computer. And this is a Intel Atom which runs at 1.6 GHz and it has a front side bus speed of 533 MHz which equals DDR2. And it also supports hyper but it does not support 64 bits. And now let's go back to hard disk drives. As you can see here a SSD is built in into this device here and here you also have some other options like quick boot, um, boot up logo and some other things. And here under advanced chipset settings you can adjust the DRAM frequency. You can adjust it from 400 MHz to 533. You can also do some other things here like change the graphic adapter boot priority or change the internal graphics mode. And now let's go to the next settings which is the video function configuration. So here we go. And here under the video function configuration you can see that it is a integrated graphics because you can set the memory to anything you want to from 64 megabytes to um, 128. You can also set here the resolution of your flat panel. So let's um, do this. I have here 1440 times 900. So let's set this and as you can see it also supports HDTV output and some other stuff. So now let's go back and check out the power management features. So here we go and here on the power management features you can do many stuff like you can change the suspend mode. You can change what the power button does so you can set the power button from one or off to suspend. And you can also enable wake up from USB or wake up from LAN or wake up from PME or RTC. 
And now let's go back and check up the um, PC health status. So here we can see the CPU temperature and the system temperature. So as you can see the CPU is now at 34 degrees and the system is now at 28 degrees which is really good for a fanless PC. So here we can also check out the voltages and as you can see the CPU is at 1.1 volt, 5 volts are at 5.2, 12 volts are at 12.7 and the USB voltage is at 5.2. And now let's go back and check out the other stuff. So and here we have the last tab which is the BIOS security features tab and here you can change the supervisor or user password. And now let's save the changes, exit and boot up Windows. So here we go. I don't even know if Windows is pre-installed on this device but we will see it now. So let's try if it boots up. Okay, it starts booting I think. Okay, Windows XP is pre-installed on this device so this is pretty good. I didn't expect that. I hope it's not in Chinese, but let's see. Okay, so it's booting up right now. It shouldn't take longer than a minute. Okay, that was a quite fast boot. Okay, so as you can see, Windows XP is pre-installed on this device and it's not in Chinese, hopefully. But now I will make a cut and install Windows 7 because I want to do all the tests here on Windows 7. Ok, so as you can see I have now installed Windows 7 and let's go to the computer and see how many spaces left. So as you can see from the 8GB SSD only 250MB of free space, so this is really nothing. You should definitely go with the better model with the bigger SSD or install a slim version of Windows 7. And if you go to system, you can see the system specifications. It's a 32-bit um, CPU only. It's the Intel Atom um, N270. And it's currently running at 1.6 GHz with 1 GB of RAM. And let's go to CPU ID and check out the CPU specs. So here we go. So this is CPU set and this is a really great tool to show all the information about the CPU. So here in this tool we can see that it is the Intel Atom N270, codenamed Diamond Wheel. The core voltage is currently below 1 volt and it has a core speed of 1.6 GHz. And the core multiplier is currently at 12 with a frontside bus of 533. Here we can see the caches. Here on the mainboard we can see that it has a Intel chipset. And under memory we can see that it has 1 GB of DDR2. And under SPD we can see that it has a maximum bandwidth of 400 MHz and it only has one RAM slot so you can only upgrade one RAM. And here under graphics we can see that it has integrated graphics which is the Intel GMA950. And let's open up this benchmark tool here to see how well it performs. Okay, so here we can do the CPU speed test and the CPU flops test. So here we get 1.6 GHz and let's do the CPU flops test which calculates the maximum number of gigaflops. So here we get, let's wait, here we get two gigaflops. We can also do a memory bandwidth test and let's wait. Okay, so we get 491 megabytes per second, which is a quite good value for DDR2. Let's check the disk transfer rate, which should be very fast on this SSD. Okay, so it does a write test. And here we get only 15 megabytes per second, which is a really, really low value. So I think this SSD is just a flash memory, which is soldiered to the main board. And here I want to show you this GMA booster. So this graphics chip is just a onboard graphics chip, but it's also possible to overclock it with the GMA booster. And here you can set it to 400 megahertz, which equals a 2.4 times boost. And now it should be a lot faster. And now let's open up the browser and check out some movie playback on YouTube. So here we go. Let's type YouTube and search for a full HD movie. Okay, so here we go. Let's open it up. The CPU is quite weak, but it should be okay for browsing, watching videos, use it as a home media server or just to play um, low quality games. And here YouTube opens up. Let's search for full HD movie. Here we go. Okay, so I think I have to update my Adobe Flash Player, so I will make a cut and update it now. Okay, as you can see now, I have installed the Firefox browser and updated to the latest Flash Player. 
and as you can see a movie playback with recording is a little bit laggy but if you don't record and you're just watching the video it just works fine and it, it does not lag and if you wa just want to watch or stream 720p movies it will definitely be able to do this. Okay guys, I'm now at the end of my unboxing and review video from this mini PC here. I hope you enjoyed it and if you want to buy this device or get more information on this device, you can just click on the link in the description then you will get to the seller. And this seller is 100% trustworthy, but if you want to buy this device, be sure to take the better device, the upgraded one, which has a better CPU, better graphics, a greater and faster SSD, more RAM and also Wi-Fi on board. And I really like the design of this device here, it's really high quality, but if you want to buy it, please uh, make sure that you take the high-end device. It's really much faster and it has also an HDMI connector. So if you like the video, please rate, subscribe and comment, and if you have any questions, just feel free to ask and leave here a comment under this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you again in my next videos. Bye!